Completing a Stuart triple expansion engine, this one is part 15. Improving the finish of the motion bracket, refitting the columns, repairing a broken one and removing the cylinder covers for cleaning. This motion bracket as shown here has been in my tumbler to polish it. And although it's a good bit shinier than it was to start with, as you can see there are quite a few tool marks and the tumbler polisher will not remove deep marks like this. Maybe unless I left the motion bracket in the tumbler for about a year. I'm going to do it the hard way. Here's some WD-40 and I've sprayed some of it onto a piece of wet to dry sandpaper which is 400 grit. And now it's just a case of rubbing the part up and down for quite a long time until the tool marks disappear. This clip is taken from the end of the sequence and as you can see it's quite a lot flatter and smoother. I took it into the outer part of the workshop and polished it up using my polishing spindle and some abrasive. And now I'm finishing it off on the bench using some Brasso wadding. The reason for buying the tumbler polisher was to avoid this, permanent black fingers in the workshop. After a good going over with the wadding, followed by polishing it with a cotton cloth, it now looks like this. Quite an improvement. This is a very attractive and very visible part of the engine, so it's important that it's finished well. Once the motion bracket and the columns are reunited with the engine, it should start to look quite good. I have found though that there's a minor problem with the columns. It looks like they were turned between centres, but unfortunately the centre drill was a little bit too big. So the ends of the columns, the ones that take the nuts, are quite weak. And during the re-tightening of the columns, and I wasn't overdoing it, one of them sheared off. I'm not going to make a new column, I'm going to repair the end of this one. There are two ways to do it, and the first way I'm going to show you is not a good way of doing it. Over to the lathe now, with the column in the three-jaw chuck. And here I'm carefully parting off the end part that's broken. After parting off the broken end of the column, here I'm facing the end. Until it's perfectly flat. Then I centre drilled it as usual, drilled part way into the column using a tapping size drill for 4BA and all I need to do now is screw in a 4BA bolt with the help of some Loctite 603 to hold it in place. This is a very poor way to do a job like this. Even though it works and it will do the job, that's not the point. I apply the rule that every part of a model steam engine should be a small model in itself and this is a bodge. And when I refit the column into its respective hole, the thread isn't long enough anyway, so I'm going to do this properly in the next episode. This is a very high quality engine. Some of it is well made, some of it isn't. But the parts I add to it and the repairs that I make to it need to be of good quality. There are one or two other short threads, but they're on the corner columns, and this is to allow the engine to sit on the base. The mounting of the engine to the base is a little bit on the weird side and as you can see there are three mounting holes on this side. Two of them go through cast in pads but the centre does not have any reinforcement so I'm going to create some. By tightening the sole plate down onto the box bed if I put too much pressure on the bolt in the centre it could crack the sole plate. I'll show in a future episode what I'm going to do about it. In this clip I'm temporarily reassembling the engine to see whether or not the columns fit in any of the holes and they don't actually. Some of the columns were tight and some were slack so I changed the positions of them until I got them all to be a nice even fit in the holes. And once again temporarily I refitted the cylinder block onto the top of the columns. I think the time has come to remove the cylinder covers. This is the high pressure cylinder cover. I'm curious to see whether it's fitted with a gasket. It's encouraging that it's such a good fit on the studs. When I remove it though, no gasket. The high pressure cylinder obviously is the one that gets the most pressure. And when I was test running the engine on compressed air, I can't say I was aware of a leak around this cylinder cover. I'll remove the rest of the covers and have a look at those, starting with the intermediate one. To make this part of the sequence a little bit quicker than it actually was, I've increased the speed of the video to 400%, four times normal speed. In this clip I'm removing the low pressure cylinder cover very carefully with the blade of a screwdriver. And this one has a gasket, or what's left of a gasket. When I removed the cover from the intermediate cylinder, that was also fitted with a gasket, but the gasket material was incredibly thin 
and just broke up as the cylinder covers were lifted. The amount of oil coming out of the cylinders is a good thing, at least it shows the cylinders are getting lubrication. I cleaned off the deluge of oil and then I cleaned the cylinder covers by dropping them into some panel wipe in an aerosol cap. This should degrease the covers sufficiently to allow me to successfully polish them in the tumbler polisher. And that's it for this video. Please stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.